That's what I expected. Hey guys, this is press any button and as you saw in the demonstration, we're just going to be making a slight change to our enemy attack patterns and this is going to be to delay their initial attack so that we don't take damage as soon as they pop up on the screen. The reason why we wouldn't want something like that to happen is that people playing our game would say that that's very cheap and we would end up with busted arcade units if we were releasing it in the 90s or something like that. That's not what we want. We want people to appreciate this game, to like it and to recommend it to friends and stuff so that we can be successful with this project. Now how are we going to do that? Well I've hinted at the method and the only thing left to do is go straight to Visual Studio. I'm going to say it now guys, this tutorial is going to be super short and unlike when I actually say it's going to be super short, I look at the time and I've been recording for 40 minutes, this is actually going to be a little tiny part. So here we are in the enemy attack script. This is the script that's attached to our enemy of course and it deals with sending out that ray and taking that damage from our enemy health. So the method that I've chosen to add this new functionality into our enemy attack is called wait for second. Now wait for seconds does what it says on the tin. We wait for seconds for a certain thing to happen and we have to define what that certain thing is going to be. So in void start we're actually going to create a void start because you won't have it yet. We go void start and we're going to say start coroutine and you're going to name it something specific that you'll copy it over to your IE numerator over here. But this is going to be the name of an action that's going to be happening running alongside the rest of the script that we don't want to happen immediately. And so as the name suggests coroutine, this is something that happens alongside what's happening in the rest of our script. So there's going to be two things happening. So if I did a rundown of how we had our script before, everything was in void update, so everything would happen immediately and it would update around every second. This time around we have a coroutine and not everything's in void update. Our aiming, our transform.lookat is in this coroutine down here with yield wait for seconds. That means that it's running alongside void update. But we can actually control the time at which this begins to run which means we can delay the time it takes for our enemy to snap to our character and actually take aim at them. We can accompany this with a little animation, a little trigger just to warn our player, hey, you're in his sights, he's got a beat on you. It's time to actually uh, defend yourself against that enemy and that's something that we'll do in the future. But that's just a real quick rundown of what we're doing with this coroutine. So we've done all of that in void start and then we've got IE numerator. You copy over the name of your coroutine here. So this is going to be the name of your coroutine. It goes right after the IE numerator and you finish off with brackets. Yield return new wait for seconds and we're going to say five seconds. And then transform.lookat player target. So at the beginning of our game, we're going to wait five seconds to actually initialize this part of our script. So we're not going to have transform.lookat at all at the beginning. For the first five seconds, it's going to be fully inactive. After the first five seconds, then we're going to have a good lock on on our player and we're actually going to look at them and our raycast is going to work just as it did before. Now, everything in void update will be running alongside that. So there will be raycast going out and so it might be a good idea just to remember to place enemies in a way that they won't actually just immediately fire at your character and hit them by you making a spacing mistake because they are going to be shooting it's just that they're gonna not be facing our player properly and what we can do we can actually assign this whole attack script to an invisible game object have our main enemy game object be something with animations on it where we'll be able to manipulate its movement without causing any constraints on how we're working with the attack script. So eventually this will be its own entity, just being a child of the main body of our enemy. But that's pretty much it guys. That is all I've got for this tutorial. I'll give you a demonstration again. 
So you can see that they're facing the wrong way. You'll want to look in the scene view there and then they snap and they shoot at my player there. And after that point, they keep shooting at my player until my player is dead. Let's add some time to the thing. There we go. Anyway guys, that's been another press any button tutorial. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, go ahead and do that. But otherwise guys, press on and keep creating.